The first acrylic paint pouring technique I tell all beginning artists to try is the straight pour. It is so versatile. It works with thin and thick paint. You really can't go wrong there. The next acrylic pour technique I would have them learn is the tree ring pour. It's a variation of the straight pour. We're just pouring in a ring and there's so many cool applications with this. Not only am I going to show you how to do a tree wing pour, but I got a new toy from Lolly Vefe. This is their 31 and a half inch spinner pool, and it's perfect for me to do pours on my table here. It's also collapsible, and so you can store it once your paint has dried, of course. You don't want to store that with wet paint inside. But they also have another version that's 23 inch diameter, and this fits perfectly for my cake spinner. And I can just put it in the middle here and then use one of my circle silicone mats, also from Lolly Befe. Put it right on top and look, we have our own indoor acrylic pour spinner pond. And I apologize for kneeling down in this video. I'm six foot eight, so trying to do the video, pointing down here and standing up here and seeing my face is a little hard. So you get the four foot version of David uh, kneeling down. All right, so today I'm just gonna use generic red, yellow, and blue. All of these colors are from Creative Inspirations, which you can get on Jerry's Autorama. This is one part paint to two parts of pouring medium. And the pouring medium that I'm using is a glue mixture, 70% glue, 30% water, and this is just Craftsmart white glue from Michaels, but any uh, white PVA glue, if you're not in the United States, will work great. Uh, I've used Elmer's Glue All, I've used clear, some clear glues work, some don't work near as well. School glue works, so you'll just have to try with what you have. And for a tree wing pour, all we're gonna do is take my four colors here. We're gonna get another bigger cup. This is a 10 by 10 canvas. That means there's 100 square inches of surface area, plus another 10 on these, these two sides, another 10 here. So 120 square inches of canvas, which means I need about five ounces of paint. Um, these are just over an ounce each, so I'm gonna have about five ounces of paint. I'm gonna use a cup to put all these paints together. Just gonna move them all over here. I probably shouldn't leave these big old mixing sticks in because I will hit them and they'll go flying. I've already done it once today. What I'm going to do here is I'm gonna do two different types. I'm going to do what, uh, what is a layer. I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue. I'm gonna do a little bit of blue. Very tiny bit of white. I'm gonna go red. Another very tiny bit of white. I'm gonna go yellow. Tiny bit of white. So that is the layer, and as it comes out, you're gonna get kind of layers that will kind of break up as you go, or you can fill your cup by doing a dirty pour, which just means you're pouring all of the paint straight in, and letting it just mix. So I'm gonna pour a bunch of this and then we're gonna dirty pour the last little bit. So this is just a standard layer. If I wanted to do a dirty pour, I just let it all get in there. Just let it all get in there. Now this is a little bit thicker paint, so it's not gonna mix near as much as if this was thinner. But it really doesn't matter how you layer the paint in here. All you want to consider is what colors you're going to get when these mix. Now I'm using primary color, so I'm going to get purple and green. If it mixes too much, I'm going to get mud. But because the paint is thicker, I don't think it's going to mix near as much. And that's the beauty of the straight pour and the tree ring pour like we're going to do here is so many different ways to do it and it's really hard to mess it up. So with the tree wing pour, what I like to do, when you have a cup like this and you have so much area here, if you just pour it out like this, you're gonna get a ton of paint. So what a lot of us do is we squeeze, so we get just, and then I can 
keep my paint that's coming out, it's, I think it's a lot easier to control the flow of how much paint is coming out. So for a tree ring pour, there's lots of different ways to do it. The, the way most people do it is they just let it start spitting out and just go in a ring. See, now that, now that the paint's coming out, it stays nice and even. So the other thing you can do is you don't necessarily have to do that. You can do a large ring. So I can start out here and let it run inward or outward. I could move around with my ring. There's a traveling ring where you, you do your ring pour and you move around. There's also the infinity pour where you just go in the sign of an infinity. All of these work and all of them are just a variation of the ring pour. And then last I'm just gonna... The more paint you have the quicker it's gonna come out. The less paint you have the less quick it's gonna come out. And we're just going to be patient here. I still got quite a bit of paint in there and I need it all to cover everything so but as you can see especially this last little bit you're I'm getting rings like I you'd see in a tree when you cut it down. Now I could have also just left this here and turned but I'm kind of off-centered here, so I'm not turning it exactly. I'm grab that. Just because I have a square canvas, the edges are also the hard, always the hardest place to get, so I'm just gonna kind of pre-paint with all my extra paint here. But you can already see the multiple different ways I did tree ring pour, how different each one looks. Let's go in for a really quick close-up. So this was kind of the traveling tree ring. Then on the outside here, here and here I have the figure eight. And then here I have the traditional. And then kind of on the outside I have the traditional. All awesome ways to do a tree ring pour. All right, so now I've let it sit for a second. I'm gonna pop a couple of the bubbles with my torch. So we're just gonna spin, well, First I need to center this paint. As you can see I have a little bit more, because I did this traveling tree ring pour I had more paint here so it kind of moved this way. So we just want to shift that a little. One of the nice things about using a spinner like this is it's going to take the center and push it out. I'm not going to get weird lines like you see in a picture like this where See how the, I, I was pushing it this way and then I pushed it this way and I get these little strange lines and I lose my circles. In this case, I should keep them because they should just open up this way. I'm just going to go nice and easy at first. I'm going to move my mat. Move my tree ring into the center again. I'm going to do it one more time. Didn't quite get all the edges here. Everywhere else looks good, so I'm going to go one more time, see if we can't...
I really love how this came out. Now you can see here, this is the normal tree wing pour that we did at the end. And look how big it got. Remember how small it was at the beginning? Look how big it is now that we've spun it out. And this little piece in the middle, I was just letting the paint go straight in. So that is the difference between a straight pour and a tree wing pour. See how the color kind of stays, especially the color that's coming out at the end, it kind of stays together. So there's the difference there. This part is my infinity pour that I kind of did. And then I had some traveling ring pour, but overall I really love how the colors came out. Also that little bit of white that I was putting in kind of gives you a transparent look in some of these layers, which I really love. So overall, super easy acrylic pour technique for beginners. I highly recommend it. And if you haven't done an acrylic pour yet or are struggling, you need to look at this video where I show you everything you need to know to get started and to troubleshoot your first pours.